Hey, what's up, YouTube? You read that title, and you know what this video is about. Now, I'm wearing this black bandana. Excuse me a second. I'm wearing this black bandana because I thought it would make me look cool for the fucking video. Don't like it? Tough shit. Eat a dick and die. So we're gonna start off with, uh, yeah, this has been <laughs> a, a video I've always wanted to do. Uh, I've just been too lazy to make it. Top 10 hot video game bitches of all time. My my personal favorite top 10. Alright? Top 10 video game bitches. Alright? Number 10. Miss Pac-Man. That's right, Miss motherfucking OG bitch of the 80s, Miss Pac-Man. Wanna know why? You're probably thinking, hey, she's not even fucking human. Of course not. Let me tell you what, what's sexy about Miss Pac-Man. Alright, well what's Pac-Man about? Chewing the pellets and shit. Miss Pac-Man chewing on those pellets, that alone tells me that Miss Pac-Man exercises her mouth well. Which of course leads to uh, her oral skills being fucking great. I can imagine that getting a blowjob from Miss Pac-Man is something that must be extraordinarily out of this fucking world. I mean, the fucking bitch chews on fucking ball-sized pellets it throughout her video game history, alright? So I'm pretty sure that not only can she suck a mean dick, but she can suck a good pair of balls. And Miss Pac-Man, <laughs> I let her suck on my two pellets any fucking time. You know what I'm saying? So Miss Pac-Man, the reason you're number 10 is because, number one, you don't talk too much, alright? You're a quiet ass bitch. And number two, I'm pretty sure you can suck a nice, good, clean pair of balls. Alright? Uh, yeah. Number nine. <laughs> some people may think she's overrated. Uh, where the fuck is it? I'm sorry, I wrote down some of the things here. Ah, Laura Croft. Laura Croft, back in the day, she made an uh, you know impact in, during the PlayStation days, the early Sony PlayStation days. You know, she was just natural beauty. She had sex appeal. She was athletic, and best of all, mate, she was from London. <laughs> hey ho would you like a cup of tea and crumpets with your uh, milk tea? <laughs> Good old jolly merry old England, London. Yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, sexy accent. She was raised as an aristoc aristocrat, an aristocrat from good old London. <laughs> good old mate. I am from London, England. So yeah, Lara Croft definitely belongs on, the, on number nine because Lara Croft, <laughs> let me tell you something, had a fucking accent fucking hot. Well, I've always liked British girls, you know, British girls just have that sexy English accent, I'm telling you. I'm telling you people, them, Brit them Brits, you guys got some sexy women. Number eight. Ooh, Chung Lee. Love the Chung Lee. You know? That's right, sexy fucking Chung Lee. Martial artist, muscular thighs, her hair was always in the ox horn style. Uh, very cheerful. She's come a long way over the years, you know. She's progressed, and look at her. I mean, she, she's a pretty a big name in, in video game history. Chun Li, cute fucking bitch from China. Chun Li, fucking cute. Number seven. People, a lot of people may not know this. Maybe the underground video game fans might know this, but my fucking favorite teenage bitch of all time. I was a fan of the series. Silent Hill. That's right. Heather fucking Mason from Silent Hill 3. Notice that somber, depressing, uh, emo sort of look on her. Just somber, dark. You know, I've always loved that about Heather Mason. She was quiet, soft-spoken teenage bitch. She found herself drawn to Silent Hill's alternate, alternate, Excuse me, alternate reality, I'm sorry. Uh, we all know Silent Hill, to me, 
scary fucking game. It was way scarier than Resident Evil. Resident Evil had great action, all right? But it wasn't as scary as Silent Hill 3. Silent Hill fucking... I play that game in the dark to get a feel of it, to get scared. And sometimes I turn... I get up and find myself turning the light back on. Because there'd be some freaky fucking shit in, in the Silent Hill video game series. Uh, I know in part 3, some cult, uh, they wanted to use her so they can give birth to their fucking god. You know? So Heather Mason, definitely on that list because, well... It just it was just her just the way she looked her white vest green skirt uh it was just something about Heather Mason all right number six motherfuckers ooh Jill Valentine always looking sleek and sexy in her tactical gear. <laughs> Jill Valentine Capcom did a great job former member of Stars. Started out as a weak, soft-spoken girl. Hey, Jill. By the end of Resident Evil 5, that bitch is a fucking badass, okay? To her, blowing zombies is like a walk in the fucking park. Alright? Definitely strong. Jill Valentine, she'd get it real good. Ooh, number five. Bayonetta. Devilishly sexy. A witch, sexy fucking witch, uses all sorts of guns and she uses her hair to fucking dismantle her enemies, destroy her enemies. Bayonetta, sexy fucking bitch, nice fucking ass. As a matter of fact, the girl that played her in the Japanese commercial, I'm going to post the link, was kind of, you know, an, an exact copy of Bayonetta. Looked exactly like her. You know, very fucking sexy. Check out the Bayonetta Japanese commercial. And the song was pretty catchy, too. So, Bayonetta, definitely not. Did you guys ever play the fucking video game? That tight leather dress and shit? Bitch walking with a fucking, just nice fucking ass and shit. Number four, ooh, everybody's favorite. Everybody has their fucking tongue to the ground when they hear, when they just hear her fucking name. Tifa Lockhart. That's right. Big titties, nice ass. She was strong, independent, attractive. One of the most adored video game characters. She was a sweetheart and a close ally in your fucking Final Fantasy VII battles. Matter of fact, she was on my team when I fought the final boss, Sephiroth, in his fucking angel form or something like that. I played Final Fantasy VII a long time ago. Great game. Mastered it. Beat it. Alright, Tifa Lockhart. I, I would do anything, alright, to put my face between her fucking tits and suck them dry. Suck her milk fucking dry. Number three. Gotta take it old school. Princess Peach. You already know. Here's a sprite of her. How she looked like in, in um, during her early Nintendo days. You know, she looked like she looked like a fucking uh, crackhead. But over the years, she uh, evolved into the princess that that you see now. Here's a picture of her as a sprite from the Nintendo days. Check this out. Princess Peach over the days definitely evolved throughout the series. Uh, always portrayed as Mario's love interest. And the frequent damsel in distress. Mario! Mario, help me, Mario! Koopa wants to shove a dildo up my ass, Mario! You know, and then you had to save her from Donkey Kong? Well, I don't think, no, I don't think that was her in the Donkey Kong series. When, you had to, when Mario had to fight fucking Donkey Kong on top of that fucking, uh... He had to climb the ladders and Donkey Kong was all the way on top of that pedestal. No, it was a princess on top of the pedestal. No, it wasn't even a prince, I'm sorry. It was just some random fucking bitch they threw in there. I don't know who the fuck it was. But I'm glad they killed her off because she sounded like she sucked. Alright. Princess Peach, very feminine personality. And the pink looked good on her. Alright. Gee, Mario! Thank you, Mario! What I didn't like is the fact that all them times... You know, being saved by Mario frequently, I mean, you're not going to give him the pussy? 
I mean, come on, bitch. Moro just proved that he's a fucking man. He's gone through hell and back. Literally, hell and back. Going into fucking King Koopa's castles, right? His kids are uh, battleships, a lot of fire. All right, literally, hell and back. Fucking what? King Koopa's fucking Bowser, all right? I, I, I like to call him King Koopa better because that would be his original name, but King Koopa, this motherfucker, yo, his fucking... This guy was... <laughs> this guy loved to torture people. I think this guy loved to torture people. And look at the way his castle was set up. Molten lava, traps. I mean, this guy, King Koopa, was sick. That's why I love Bowser. He was a sick fuck like me. You know? I wonder if he ever raped the fucking princess. Um, but yeah, definitely Moro deserves that pussy. Definitely. That tight peach pussy. Ooh, number two. My favorite fucking bitch. Excuse me. I shouldn't even be disrespecting her like that. My favorite fucking woman. Princess Zelda. Okay? Always depicted, depicted as a kind and benevolent ruler. She was wise beyond her years and, and intelligent enough to rule over her own people, over her people. All right? Princess Zelda, classy, sophisticated, wasn't a slut, wasn't a hoe. Princess Zelda, let me tell you about Zelda. She was loyal. All right? She waited for Link. All right? She never gave up that pussy to anybody. She always had faith in Link. She was always confident that Link would come through and save her. Always stood there waiting with her hands. Remember when you seen her in the cutscene storylines? I know Zelda. The Zelda series, each one always took place in alternate alternate universes. Because, you know, each story was just different. You know, each story, um, Zelda and Link were, were, would meet um, in, different, in different ways. You know, Zelda and Link, they were... Um, <sighs> Link was always self saving Zelda. Uh, yeah, Zelda was a classy woman. I mean, she was a princess. She wasn't dressing like a fucking hoe. She was... The Zelda I didn't like was the one from the fucking, uh, what do you call it? The old cartoon series. She was an obnoxious fucking bitch. And that wasn't, that wasn't the Zelda that we see in the video games. That was so obnoxious fucking animated chick. Alright? Oh, Link. You know? Well, excuse me, princess. All them times he's saving the fucking bitch, and I don't think that bitch ever gave him a thank you or a, or a kiss. Or that, that, in the cartoon series, Link, he didn't want pussy. He just wanted a kiss. I'm sure he did want pussy, but he wanted to start things off at least a little slow. At least try to like win her heart. That's why he saved her, and all he asked for was a kiss. The bitch won't even give him a fucking hug. So to the the obnoxious Zelda in the cartoon series, fuck off. Alright, if I'm saving a bitch constantly, 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 and all the times she just looks at me as a friend, go die. Uh, yeah. So, Princess Zelda, classy, sophisticated girl. Love her. Marriage material, by the way. You ladies should be taking notes about Princess Zelda. That's a marriage material. That's a woman right there. The Zelda from the video game series. Not the bullshit fucking trick obnoxious bitch from the cartoon series. And number fucking one, motherfuckers. Another video game hit. Had a crush on her. She looks sexy in her red outfit. Especially her red leather fucking skirt. Blaze Fielding. Martial artist. A cop who quit the corrupt police force in Streets of Rage 1. Um, she was volunteering. And determined. Very proud. And she kicked fucking ass. She was loyal to her friends Axel. And who else? Uh, the other Streets of Rage characters. Max. What's the name of the little black kid? The skater kid? Was it Skate? I think. Yeah. Blaze Fielding. She was like second in command. Kicked fucking ass. What can you say? You've seen the pictures. Blaze Fielding. One of the best fucking 
uh, video game females that Sega Genesis created. All right, back then Sega was doing a good job creating characters, but it's a damn shame that went out of business. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. All right, people. So let me know what you think. That is my list of my top ten video game bitches. Peace out.